Hello everyone and welcome back to Under Rise of Kingdom Live stream. This is your boy Jeroni, and today we have 1960 Fort dropping in the territory of 1307 1959. So let's see what they plan to do next. This is going to be one hour until this fort is going to be built, <coughs> as you notice. Uh, Song has a lot of territory as well here, but they are kind of swarming the place with fortresses. Yesterday, 1302, they were trying to breach out on this side and they were very successful, but apparently they either gave up, I guess, um, because of the fortresses being built or maybe their downtime, because it seems that they were pushed back. So now they are building this fortress. So let's see how this is um, gonna go. Sandorius, how are you doing? Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream, John. Hello, test, test. <laughs> Testing what exactly? And looks like there is um, dev feedback as well, which is on uh, Lilith Forum. We can definitely talk about that as well. MVQ, stop asking those kind of question is really ridiculous. Let's uh, just get this thing started. It didn't change the thumbnail. Hmm. I've done a, a brand new thumbnail for this, but it seems like it didn't took it. <coughs> Let me just have a quick look. Why didn't it took the new thumb? Oh yeah, it's here. The thumbnail. I've done the thumbnail with the four drop. How about 2259? Well, like I said, they are swarming this area with uh, fortresses. This is 1959, so I don't know 2259. Oh, you're talking about uh, 2259. They are probably on this side. Yeah, they are still locked in so far. They have some people outside. It seems that this fortress is burning every now and then. So this is the 2259 you're talking about. <coughs> they are still locked in. Probably saving up for when Kingsland comes around so they can uh, try to burst out somewhere. That's my best guess. Uh, what they are trying to do right now we will see what's gonna uh, happen a little bit later on zoom hello ronnie have a good day hey thank you very much so what has happened since yesterday it seems that uh, they gave up on this pass because uh 1307 don't want to fight just want to kill troops so they kind of abandoned this side, uh, 1960, and they are focusing all their forces on the top. So pretty much it's just 2361 if they want to have some action, maybe try to get the pass and, and so on. So obviously they can do that. Um, on the passes there is nothing going on. It's just here on the top. It seems that all the forces are concentrated here on the top. Wow. This is just happening right now. This is literally happening right now. That This is definitely something. I'm telling you. 1960 just four drop in front of the pass. That's just crazy. That's just a, another level of craziness right here. Looks like 1307 is mobilizing. It looks like um, they're getting rallied as well with mix of troops. That's probably a joke, I guess. 
and um, 1607 is getting mobilized 1959 is getting mobilized this is just this is madness they are really doing it So hello everyone, welcome to the stream. It seems like it's going to be a crazy stream. <laughs> 1960 just four dropping in front of the past. This is mind blowing right here. Yep, definitely. That's just, 1960 is on another level, I'm telling you. So they're having one four drop here from 60 GT. And then they have this four drop here from 60 AE. So they have a couple of members here and they have Song and, and Duck as well, which obviously they have a couple of territories here. But like I was mentioning earlier, they kind of layer this entire area <laughs> with forts. <laughs> so there's not going to be anywhere they're going to get anytime soon, to put it like that. All these mountains and and all that. So that is that. But six, uh, definitely a fortress from 1960 over there is going to be a big problem. And this fortress will be built in um, 51 minutes, so the flags will hold it, so they don't need to be there anymore. And now, <laughs> they just drop a fort in front of the pass. Now, will they be able to build that fortress? That's, that's going to be something, I can tell you that. <clears throat> And the fighting has started. It seems like when 1960 wants a fight, they will definitely get a fight. 1307 is responding as well. Sending all the players that are probably online to CB to assist with the field fighting. And let's see how this is going to roll. Joy, hey, welcome to the stream and everybody else. Welcome, welcome. Sax, how are you doing, brother? Hey, bud, have a nice stream. Thank you very much. 1960 VIP version of 1429. <laughs> well, 1960 has good allies as well. 1302 have been doing quite a lot of work in this KVK. Although, from what I heard from the other people, they have a big downtime. So when they go in downtime, they definitely go in downtime. But when is their uptime, they are there and they are definitely dedicated. So let's see how uh, how this is is gonna develop further. Ashar, how are you doing? Hello, welcome to the stream. That fort is going to get down in 5 hours. Well, it takes 2 hours and 15 minutes to build, so if it's going to go down in 5 hours, not sure uh, if your math is right. It will be so hard to defend this fortress against triple rallies. You have a, a fair point right there. They can get rallied by CB by Aeon and by PW you are very correct triple rally can happen so like I said this is a bold move from 1960 but if they manage to pull this I would say that it's safe to say maybe 75% they already won this KVK if they build that fortress they are literally fighting three kingdoms 1959, 1607, and 1307. If three kingdoms cannot take down a fortress that is building, I think it's safe to say that uh, 1960 is going to win the King's Land too. What do you all think about that? How far is fort from the pass? It's next to the pass. So they drop the fort right in front of the pass. 
That's just insane. <laughs> <laughs> that does rock i can't really show that report i mean uh, your comment my apologies yeah i read it is re really hilarious <laughs> but i can't really show it so 1307 is uh, definitely responding on the field heavily responding on the field it seems that is the only kingdom that has a fast uh, response SP is also gathering some people, which I believe this is um, 1959. Yes, so it's the same uh, kingdom as PW. They are making a mother ball and they are fighting and responding over there. PW is also making a, a mother ball. Aeon, Ark of Narvalis. Aeon, I think it's easier to say. They are. Probably trying to gather their thoughts and try to make a murder ball. I see people coming uh, south. So they are trying to, to master their strength and um, mobilize an offensive. In the meantime, let's get some music going. I just saw this and I was like, yo, this is just another level of craziness. Two hours and this fortress is going to be built. I think Aeon is always on. <laughs> Arc of Norvalis. Always on. Well, if they are always on, that's good. That's really good for them. Let's see how is this uh, motor ball going. Because it seems like 1307 is uh, pushing 1960. This is what I see right now in the... SP is rallying the pass as well, so this could be a very nice distraction. Uh, rallying the pass and rallying the fortress in the same time. Let's see how 1960 will manage this. I think this is a little bit over their hand. I think they are forcing their hand. This is what I'm believing right now, that 1960 is probably trying too much. <laughs> they definitely want action and they're definitely going to get the action they wanted. But I just think it's a little bit too much. Let's see if this fortress is going to go down. It's very interesting if this is going to be built. Triple rally. Yes, most likely there is going to be triple rally. I thought uh, 1307, but they are doing very well carrying 1008 and 59. They, they are, to be honest. I've seen that uh, the other kingdoms cannot do much against 1960. They are fighting... What, no, what just happened? Oh my god, I pressed one. My apologies, I, I pressed one, and uh, that's a uh, <clears throat> that's a key binding for selecting my first march. Anyway, so yeah, 1307, it seems that is pushing the field. Like I said, 1960, they are forcing their hand with this fortress they want to get people out and they definitely getting the people out hold on because it's the same the same song playing I'm just uh, just give me one more minute and I'll be right back. Sixty GT versus <laughs> nine, 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 nine billion alliance coins. <laughs> they definitely have a, a lot of coins. I mean, 
when you have a lot of gold chests going in the alliance, there is a lot of credit. I can tell you that. I've seen that myself. So there you have it. They have a triple rally going on the fortress right now. And uh, 1307, they are keeping them at the pass. So that fortress is going to go down. Yeah, th this fortress is going to go down. Yeah, like I said, it, it is a little bit over, over their hand. Yeah, 1960 thought that they can definitely pull this off. To Pakal Harald and uh, an Attila Nevsky. And now, for the for the lols, they are also swarming when the fortress is almost down. So that's it. They took the fortress down. <coughs> Triple Rally Rip, Dragotin Gaming. How are you doing, brother? They love dropping forts in spots that are already surrounded by other forts. It's kind of becoming their thing. Well, I think they want to fight, to be honest. And probably that's the only way they can get attention, I guess. 7 million alliance coins. I would say that they probably have around 300 million alliance coins. I'm just presuming. So 1960, this alliance, the 60 GT that they are using, I would presume that they have around 300 million credits right now. Just just my presumption. 960 are very strong, don't get me wrong. Definitely they are very strong, but I noticed myself that they kind of forced their hand with that fortress. That was a, a ballsy move, what they've done there. Snoop. Hello, Ronnie. Good evening. Good evening to you too. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the stream. So far, 1307 is carrying their uh, weight. I think 1307 is carrying a lot of the other kingdoms, like I said earlier in the stream. Um, I don't think 1959, 1607, they can do much to 1960. I think only 13, 1307, they can be a match and they can hurt them. From what I have seen so far. I think 1960 was just uh, forcing them <laughs> to feel fight. Ronnie, they have like 700 million alliance credits. Why wouldn't they? 700 million? I think that's an overstatement. I would say around 300 million or maybe a bit over 300 million. They do because I was in 2155 where there was gold shower every day and I know how many alliance credits that alliance had at some point um, with the gift level. So yeah, it's I would say that it's, it's over 300 million. 300, 350, somewhere around there. Don't say gold shower. <laughs> well, that's how it was. And um, at some point, that alliance had over 300 million credits, which was pretty crazy. Right, so let's see what 1960 is going to do now, because they definitely got the attention they wanted. They definitely got the people on the field. So let's see what they plan to do next. Push hard on the field. Drop another fortress. Haven't seen much performance from 1008 compared to other kingdoms. Well, the problem is 1008, I said that in the previous live stream, they are only in uh, that pass. So the only thing they can do, let me just zoom out and go there. The only thing they can do is probably take this pass and try to burn some of these fortresses. That's about it. They don't have any territory on, on this side. They have only one spot they can uh, fight from. And they have tried to push out, but it's very hard. I mean, this is well known throughout hundreds of KVKs, thousands of KVKs, if there were thousands. When one kingdom is locked in, it's very hard to, to push out. Unless the other kingdoms gave up, then you just build a flag and you burn the fortresses. But they've tried to push out as well, and it, it didn't work. So that's the, the situation. 
That's why you, you didn't see much from them. I also don't know how active they are, so let me just put it like that. But from what I've seen and what they are capable to do, it isn't much that they can do. So finally, 1960 is going out. It's going on the field, it's going to fight. So Matt Phantom stopped fighting until Kingsland. Finally, they're coming out again. Fish. <laughs> That's it. You guys got what, what you wanted. It only costed the fortress. <laughs> the price of a fortress to get them out. Huh? <laughs> Satis, how are you doing, brother? Welcome to the stream. Dragotin. I'm redoing all my crystal tech. They refunded the entire damn tree. Oh, really? Oh, wow, that's crazy. How did that happen? You should definitely do a video about it. Or just say a few words if you don't do a video. But why did they refund the entire tree? Did they change the tree? Did they done like a hot fix or something? It happened to us in when I was in last KVK on 2155, but it was right at the beginning. Oh, Cow Karak was bugged. And for that reason, they, they refunded the entire tree? I, it's weird. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. They refunded the entire tree, probably because the Karak was bugged and people were getting a crap ton of crystals and it was the only way they could do it. I don't see speed ups. Oh, that's a big problem. That's that's a reason to complain right there. The 60 GT lured them for battlefield. Yep, <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> they got them mobilized. <laughs> Paul, how are you doing, brother? Welcome to the stream. Those who tried to finish uh, Karak and got crystals got refunded. No crystal from Karak? I have no idea. Uh, Dragon just said that their entire crystal tree got refunded because there was a bug on the Karak. So I, I have no details about it as I'm not in KVK, so I don't know. So it's the only one that can um, probably detail it. Maybe he's gonna do a video about it. KM, 1365, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. The Drago says that he didn't got his speed up there. I did say hi to Paul as well. Povestia Calator Lui, salut. Those that did Karak before, it was supposed to release only. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Boy, it's been a long time since you stream. Right, so 1960 right now is fighting on three fronts. They are fighting 1307, they are fighting SP, and they are fighting Aeon with PW as well. So let's see if they manage to push everybody on the field and try another four drop. Are they going to be crazy enough to try another 4 drop? Let's see. <laughs> I'm in that KVK and they resetting all the crystal tech as well as they got all their season coins on the negative. Holy moly scrap and only. And season coins on negative, that's, that's pretty big. It's not a fake pole. No, that's, that's the real pole. The four dropping show was too short. Well, there is uh, there is another four being dropped. <coughs> it is right here on the top, so I'm not 100% sure what they plan to do with this one. In 32 minutes, it will be built. 
uh, looks like uh, Songendaki is retreating. I think the whole plan is once this fortress is built to get some territory so uh, 1960 can have like 24 7 action and burn this fort. Put pressure on this side non stop. I think that's the whole plan. Which I think it's a really good plan to be honest. They'll be able to get a bunch of cities in this area, even though it's in the front of the pass. And then Dak and Song, whoever is online, can also come and help them with the field if they want to. So that's, that's a nice strategy. But they already layered this. Look at that, look how many forts. I think the King's Land will open since the King's Land is Monday. They still have plenty of time to burn fortresses if they want to and maybe try to break through. If they manage to do that by the end of the week, and burn through that many fortresses, there will be something. It might be able to open some crack somewhere and then drop another fortress and try to burn flags in a couple of directions and they can eventually uh, reach the, the level 5 passes. I think that's the, the plan, but let's see if um, it will work out the way they want to. Ronnie needs resources for next KVK. I definitely do. Are you offering to give me some? I can give you my location. Alright, so let's see how the offensive from 1960 is going on. Ronnie for Kraken. Baba Teisiada Turk is in the chat. I didn't see him. Chab, how, how are you doing, brother? Welcome to the stream. Whoever started Cow got Crystal and Tech Reset. Speed ups are allegedly refunded in 60 minute items. <coughs> Drago was saying that he didn't got his speed ups back. Probably didn't saw the, the mail, I guess. By all the conquest coins on the negative, I mean that they took back all the coins you got from research. Yeah, I understood that uh, Moat has. I understood what you were referring, but again, that's that's pretty crazy. So basically, all the tech that you research, you got coins from, and obviously they um, they took back the coins as well if they gave you back the crystals. 1959 can rally that fort. Pepsi, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Guan Expertise, Expertise Martel, CPO. Pause, I don't understand what uh, what you're saying there. You need to be more specific. 1008 so far is isn't doing anything compared to 302. We will see in Kingsland. I think that's where they can uh, show their true colors of fighting, I guess. We will see how active they are in Kingsland. 1307 is making a decent sized murder ball over here. 1960 is uh, pushing on PW and Aeon. Maybe they gathering for another port drop. <laughs> I think they need more forces. I don't think they have enough people here to do a four drop. But let's see if they will try to do it. Dirios, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I'm not gonna read comments anymore about 1008. I already talked too much about them. I think they get a lot more attention than they should. Martel Scipio Garrison City is okay. No. If you want against Shadow Legion, yes, that can work. But other than that, I wouldn't use Martel and Scipio as a city garrison. If you want to take rallies, better put a shield on you. Attila Nevsky or Chandra Nevsky? Attila Nevsky. I would definitely vote for Attila Nevsky. Guan Leo and Alex Scipio, or Guan Alex and Scipio Mehmed. 
Hmm. How about Guan Mehmed and CPO Alex? I had a lot of good reports with CPO Alex and a lot of people are saying the same after they, they have tried Guan, uh, uh, CPO and Alex that is working really well. And I tried Guan and Mehmed and it's working really good. So why not Guan Mehmed and uh, CPO Alex? Ronnie, I bet all this fighting giving you the itch <laughs> for 556k. I'm definitely looking forward. Once our fighting starts, uh, you you will see eight ten hour streams again, or how long I will be able to to play. Fort two, yeah, Fort two got uh, got destroyed. Fort one is still building. What? The, what the... Nineteen fifty nine. Okay. Will they be able to touch it? I don't think so. I, I think it's protected by the TN. What is wrong today with four drops? <laughs> Today is the day for four drops. Okay, just give me one moment. I think the the music was a little bit too loud. Let me just adjust that. I just noticed. My apologies. It's fixed now. Nobody noticed, so I guess it wasn't too loud. No, will uh, touch when flag is destroyed. Wow, you're very right. <laughs> this is crazy. Today is random four drop day. <laughs> so many aggressive moves. Well, I like it. I really like it. Which commanders have you got the most kills from in KVK? Attila and Takeda. <laughs> that's that's the reality. There's there's no reason to hide it. <laughs> My highest commanders with the highest skills are Attila and Takeda. And I haven't used Takeda for maybe a year, and I think he's still in the top. So it looks like 1960 is making a giant murder ball to try to combat the 1307 murder ball. Let's see if that is going to happen or they're just going to go for um, Aeon and PW. I don't think PW is coming out anymore. Just a handful of players. Looks like we're, we're going to have a big clash over here between 1307 and 1960. Where, when is Kingsland opening? I was told that it's going to be Monday. 13 forts for uh, 302. 13 forts. That's a lot. Is Pakal and Harald still worth it to invest? <clears throat> to be honest, that, that, that is a lot of uh, high skill damaging commanders right now in the game. I think they will destroy your Pakal and Harald really fast. For city hopping, as long as people don't hit you back, it's still good Pakal and Harald. But other than that, I don't think it's very profitable as it used to be. For individual kills, yes, for helping your kingdom not. So Gingerbread gave you the short version of the answer. I think yesterday the fort is still there. It's impossible to just disappear. Flesh in 56 with you. No, I don't. I don't think Flesh is in uh, is in fifteen fifty six. Then uh, sixty GT murder ball is like ten people. I think it's more than ten people. Let's let's not uh, overreact a little bit. I know they all have max tech and and all that, but still, 
I, I think it's more than 10 people in my opinion 60 has another fort in the north yeah uh, we already checked that one and we saw that one so it looks like 1960 they went to fight with the SP murder ball and 1307 is pushing south but it's just a couple of players Mimi is this the real Mimi or it's just uh, another Mimi I think it's just another guy with with Mimi After getting City Hall 22, should I upgrade my troops and other building or should I focus on getting C uh, City Hall 25? Empty, you should definitely keep focusing on developing your City Hall. But reaching tier 4 is also very important. So if you're City Hall 22, make sure you unlock your tier 4 troops, which you should have done at City Hall 21, but it's not too late right now. So get your tier 4 troops unlocked and after that keep uh, focusing to get your city hall 25. So 1960 forces from the left side who was uh, fighting with uh, SP. They are now moving in to fight with 1307. So we're having a big clash over here between 1960 and 1307. There's also a rally on the pass from PW, Pakal and Harald. I have noticed that this particular player from PW is a big fan of Pakal and Harald. He's just Pakal and Harald everything. It doesn't matter what is the garrison, he's just Pakal and Harald. Right, so let's see who is going to win this murder ball because this is definitely a big clash going on over here. It's Mimi. Oh, Mini? It, I thought it was Mimi. It, it, it's Mini. All right. My apologies. So, yeah, it's a difference. Mimi, Mini. Flesh supposedly gonna join 1008 for uh, Planga Plongo after this KVK. I have no idea where Flesh is going, to be honest. If he done any announcement, then probably that's where he's going. He's running without reinforcements. Yeah, like I said, he's a big fan of Pakal and Harald. But I don't think his reports are good. We need sunglasses back. 12 banana. <laughs> you want the sunglasses back? It's 1960 are winning. They're doing really good right now. They've done a 4 drop over here where is the marker showtime. Which they lost it because it was triple rally and they got pushed on the field as well. Who will win? We will know in Kingsland, which is going to happen on Monday. But there is some aggressive moves going on in the north over here on top of the fighting that is happening right now. And that is uh, 1960 building a fort. <coughs> which is going to be built in uh, 20 minutes. They had the help of uh, Song and Duck. So let's see what they plan to do once this fortress is going to be built. Because they are pretty much surrounded by fortresses. They probably just want to make sure that they keep burning fortresses in this area. Which I think is going to work. And then they are probably doing some aggressive move on this side. What they've done yesterday to try to drop another fortress. Because it looks like DT has dropped a fortress. Which takes another 3 hours to build. But Song is building a flag over here and they will be able to, I, this is what people said, that they will be able to touch it once this flag goes down. Which is going to go down in about half an hour, 40 minutes, give or take. And they probably have to build another flag and they will touch this, this fortress. And then they can probably place their own fortress again to try to go aggressive and keep burning fortresses. Let's see if that's going to be the plan. It is a nice strategy what they are doing right now. 1302 and 1960 just putting pressure on one side in Sakaka. Instead of what they were doing on the previous days. They were fighting on both passes. Fighting on um, Kalcha as well. Which now they, they pretty much abandon it. 
and fighting on the other side as well so now they're just focusing all their forces on one side which is uh, way better because they can coordinate much better with uh, 1302 so it looks like uh, 1960 won the murder ball yep and now they are regrouping We will know in King's Land that 1960 can solo all kingdoms. <laughs> Sunglasses is only when Ronnie is fighting. Can't rally with anything else. Lord, get swarmed. Uh, Rampage, that's a that's a very good point regarding the Pakal and Harald statement earlier. That's uh, that's also true. If you don't do Pakal and Harald, pretty much anything else gets swarmed down. I don't see 1008 do many action this KVK. Are they uh, saving for Kingsland? I guess so, but they're also not in this zone, so they don't have territory in this zone. Name of the song, I think you were, you wanted the previous song. This is um, Lilac Skies, Corbin Kitties. Corbin Kites, my apologies, not Kitties. <laughs> Beast mode, thank you very much. You are our legend. With or without glasses. Metanol, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Tennessee, morning. Good morning to you too. Nice to see some action on my day off. Yep, there was, um, there was a fortress drop here, but they took it down and there is another fortress on the north, which we're gonna go a little bit later on. In 15 minutes, it's gonna be built. When I started the stream, there was one hour. And in 15 minutes it will be built. So let's see what 1960 plans to do with that one. 1307 is grouping again. If 1960 will master a, a big murder ball, they might be able to attempt another four drop. I don't think they want to spend the resources again for a four drop. Unless they don't get the field fight. <laughs> if they don't get the fuel fights then they might drop another forge duck and song doing some heavy lifting in the side they're doing work yeah but i i'm not sure what happened yesterday because i really thought that this is going to be over as you know yesterday they were building out from this side which they can still do if they wanted to all they have to do is just relocate the fortress so they can burn this flag but in any situation, they kind of drop forts as well, so they kind of blocking everything. From what I see, I'm not sure what they've done yesterday. What happened? How did they lost those flags? They probably just gave up from uh, what I I see, because they could have burned this territory, get some space here, get some um, cities to TP and just try to burn those those forts 307 should avoid field fighting 60 gt will swarm when uh, open kingsland i definitely waiting for that wizzy gaming how are you doing welcome to the stream so this is the fortress in the north that i was talking about in 40 minutes will be built and um 302 they already abandoned this uh, this area 302 right now is on this spot right here trying to take down that fort they are mobilizing on this side it's not a whole lot to be honest considering the other days so it's not a big big mobilization from um, from 302 oh wow they they just dropping flags to try to defend this fort let's see if they will uh, manage let's see how is the situation going on on the pass people are still gathering emptying hospital gathering strife is rise of forts in reality Lilith 
should limit the amount of forts each camp or kingdom can place on the map to avoid this. Hi, Pooh, thank you very much for, for the sub. Well, let, let's put it like that. If they limit the forts, then you won't get the days of fighting that you want in Strife. Because this is what everybody wanted, a lot of fighting. How can you get a lot of fighting if you don't have a chance to fight? So this is what the forts do. They give you a chance to fight. They give you prolonged battles. This is what I'm, I'm trying to say. Even if uh, you know you're winning and basically the other team is just delaying, but you're getting some action, getting something different to do rather than just uh, killing barbs and doing Karak and uh, whatever, doing forts, uh, etc. Baba, he likes this kind of KVK. Oh yeah, he definitely li likes to fight. That's 100% uh, sure. Ron, you look better with your eyes can be seen. <laughs> I'm a free to play player who is a good primary commander in the early game with double C secondary. I have Belisarius, Pelagius and Babers. I use Pelagius and double C for a very long time, so I would recommend that Mars to be used up to KVK1, but no, no later than that. Once you get to KVK2, you should try to use only legendaries. Cataloni, how are you doing, brother? Welcome to the stream. 1960 and 1307 finally clashing again. How are things looking? Things are looking really good. Uh, 1960 is still putting the pressure on. No Mafia Ronnie today. No Mafia Ronnie today. Maybe tomorrow. Fort should not be built on the same area of another fort. They need to, to nerf back forts. Like I said, if, if they touch the forts, we will not get the fights we all wanted. There is fish. You guys were asking about Harald if he's still good on the field. You see, Fish is, is using Harald. He has Harald primary. I'm not sure who's secondary. Let's see when he casts a skill if we can see the secondary. Alright, he's marching somewhere for 7 seconds. Whoever he's targeting is running away. So I can't see his second one. He's pulling back. <laughs> I'm, I'm a stalker. I'm stalking the fish. <laughs> okay, he's retreating. <laughs> he's going back. <laughs> okay, so he has uh, he has Alex, which is in another march, which means that he's not Harold and Alex. <laughs> Wait, they won Osiris? 1960? Yes, they were champions. Can you show your account? I did show my account. I'm CCQ. Thank you very much for becoming a member to the channel. Welcome to Legends Army. This is in infantry gang. I know, I have noticed that. I noticed that he's uh, heavy on uh, infantry. Amirul, hello. Nasafi Kingdom 2463. Let's go 1960. Well, 1960 is definitely going. <clears throat> it's pushing heavily on the field right now. I'm telling you that Monday is going to be fire. Monday, when the passes are going to open, it's, it's going to be fire. It's atomic bomb is gonna be in that king's land <laughs> wow 
I'm not sure if 1960 they are pissed because they lost the fortress. But they're definitely doing some work on the field, that's for sure. Monday is gonna be big swarm day. Yep, for sure. No, no, we chill, chill about the fortress. <laughs> This type of war happen once in the year. We should enjoy it. <laughs> Wasn't going to be built anyway. Triple rally position is impossible. Well, you never know if you would have made it possible. It would have been something. But yeah, it, it seemed a little bit uh, too much. Can you build forts in Kingsland? No, they fixed that. You can't drop forts in Kingsland anymore in Strife of the Eight. My Nebo is 5515. You think it's worth uh, maxing him? Well, once you obtain his expertise, he does another, another salvo of 500. Every skill rotation. That's pretty good. But if you don't want to max him, you can keep him like that for a while if you're enjoying him. I got my Nebu maxed, so it's hard for me to say how a 5515 uh, Nebu is like, but that's very good in terms of um, sculptures versus commander skill. 960 uptime, but pack 6 isn't too vital since no major breakthroughs. Hancho, yes. Yes, that's very true. About pack 6s in uh, Strife of the 8 or pack 7 in Heroic Anthem is really just about uh, trades just doing trades good evening sir ronnie how are you doing welcome when is kingsland kingsland is on monday and from what people were saying is gonna be a favorite time for 1960 and 1302 the time is in their favor when it's going to open that's what i heard we will know more details later on. Two hours, they build this flag. It looks like they are trying to defend this flag. There is a Gilgamesh. Is that Henry second? Yeah, Gilgamesh and Henry against Zenobia. Gilgamesh and Henry is doing really good against Zeno. I'm not sure if it's a Zeno Flavius or a Zeno YSS. No, that's a Zeno Flavius because you see the spears and the shields. But yeah, Gilgamesh and Henry is eating Zenobia for lunch. Dads over kills or kills over dads when it comes to counting participation. Kills over dads. Is Attila Takeda viable on field in this meta? Nope, I wouldn't really use Attila Takeda. If you want to use Attila Nevsky, that's a whole different story. I think I've talked in some of my previous videos. You can go ahead and check on the channel. I think it's 15 UTC, so 1960 will go into downtime faster than 307. Steven, we will see. We will see how things gonna play out. Everybody knows King's Lang is gonna be the most important fight, so if people will not show up, then it's gonna be the, the Kingdom loss. I think Kingdoms will have 90% accountability in that King's Land. The Lion. What would be your top three fighting kingdoms in this moment? Um, 1365, 1960 are definitely <laughs> on the top. And then I, I don't know about the rest. But I really enjoyed the fighting of 1365 and uh, I'm enjoying in the fighting of uh, 1960. 1365 had non-stop activity even though they are mostly Koreans, or at least their main alliance, um, and you expect them to go into downtime, but they had 24-7 presence. 
and same as 1960 you expect them to have a downtime but they don't so that's that's pretty crazy when you think about it Ten thirty four is crazy. Also, I didn't watch much uh, ten thirty four, so I can't really give my opinion about uh, ten thirty four. Why they didn't swarm the flag? I mean, they know they need to burn it if they want to take down the fortress. They are reinforcing that well through one city. That's interesting. Yeah, so there's a little bit of action going on here, and then is this fort, which is going to be built in two minutes. And they're trying to build flags, so 60, 1960 will not take um, too much of the territory, but they can just burn the flags, so it's not a problem. But just to give them something to do. And uh, the main action of the past six looks like 1960 is going in again on 1307 murder ball. 1556 registered this time, 100% not. I can tell you that 100% will not register this time. Ronnie, why do you not have uh, members for the channel? Of course I have members for the channel. What are you talking about? Even uh, the bot is popping uh, the link with the membership. Maybe it's not available in your country. That's a different story. Because I know the thing with membership and donation on YouTube is available. In some countries it's not available. So I, I have no idea. That's why there is a link in the description for Streamlabs. Which is uh, pretty much PayPal. So that it's available in more countries. They did 1 versus 4 last KVK. New dev feedback. I have seen it, but I'll probably do a video a little bit later on about that. Ain 1556 and 1254, a very strong fighting kingdom too. Yes, they are. They definitely are. But 1556, I haven't experienced um, with the new migration. So I don't know how our capabilities are. As a 24/7 fighting cave uh, kingdom, it's a difference. So right now I can only say as the the number two to be 1365 and um, 1960. Once I see 1556 in action and I see that we have 24/7 activity on the field, then 100% I can rank us as well. But let's see if that's gonna happen on the next KVK. If an Imperium Kingdom has downtime, you can't top it as a as a top Imperium fighting kingdom. Imperium Kingdoms should not have downtime. They should 24/7 have people on the field, uh, make murder balls if it's needed, fight, defend, rally, etc., etc. That's how an Imperium Kingdom should work. That's a fighting Imperium Kingdom. Adren Valen, thank you very much for becoming a member of the channel. Welcome to Legends Army. What was the main reason you chose 1556 over other Imperium Kingdoms? Well, I had a lot of restrictions on many of the other Imperium Kingdoms. And from what I, I have talked with the leadership of 1556, it seemed to be the most chill kingdom uh, regarding the requirements. And I was also accepted in the OL team as well, so I have a chance to eventually either be champion or maybe even get the skin since now they lower the requirements. You only need like to be like a rank uh, 4 in Osiris League in order to get the 3% training skin. So there is a lot of reasons. <laughs> KM 1365, other Imperials rejected him. <laughs> um. <clears throat> now they didn't reject me, um, I'll be honest, and I talked about this in some of the previous streams. When I applied to 1960, because I wanted to go there, they were doing back-to-back -back KVKs because they wanted to drop Imperium at that time. And um, I applied and they didn't 
take my application in consideration, they said that if I didn't get the response in two days, then my application was not taken in consideration. But they were doing back-to-back KVK, so I only understood after. So basically when they got the, the next pop, because I also wrote them when I can migrate or when I'm available to migrate. And they were doing back-to-back KVK, so I wasn't able to, to join them anyway. And then um, I tried 1365, but I wanted to join in JST and they pointed, appointed me to, to BLN. And I wanted JST because I wanted maybe at some point to be in the OL team. And obviously I said no. I said that I want JST, but they said that there will be the language barrier. Um, I won't survive there. Well, I didn't care to chat with the people. <laughs> I care about their capabilities for Osiris League. So yeah, that, that didn't work either. 1846, uh, they told me that I can't stream. They said I can join, but I can't stream if I want to record and, and maybe post after that. But they don't stream. 1254, they have Cheese Ghoul. And... Um, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, but I'm not very loved <laughs> in 12.54. Some, yes, some. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long story about 12.54. And... Uh, <laughs> 15.56. 15.56, um, I talked with them and like I said, they were very chill and um, understandable and... Um, I really, I really loved it when I was having the conversation with them and then I heard at the time I was talking with them I heard that uh, Baba is, is gonna join them as well and then I talked with Baba and there is um, other whales there that, that I know Turgai as well and uh, Turgai went there and I told him hey I'm gonna come as well because I've been in talks for months so this is not what happened in the, the past few weeks. So I've been in talks for months. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, maybe five months, you know, four or five months. Because obviously I need to plan ahead with, with my migration and uh, all that sort of things. So all these talks and, and chats about joining certain kingdoms has happened um, the past four or five months. Give or take. <clears throat> And um, yeah, 1556 is my new home. And it's gonna be my new home for a very long time. I don't plan to move anywhere else. And that's about it. I think it's a very, very strong kingdom. And it was a very, very strong kingdom. And they have really good fighters, which they are always on the field. And that's exactly something that I'm looking forward to. Because I always like to fight. I always like to be on the field. And you probably noticed that on all my streams. I like to fight. I like to be on the field. I'm losing, that's fine. But I want to have people that are keep coming out on the field. That's something that I enjoy. And I was never part of a kingdom to have that sort of players that will always ball up and we will always keep fighting and go on the field. So I'm expecting in 1556 to have that. As I've seen by the kill point that they have a lot of crazy fighters. So I'm expecting to, to have the kind of action that I'm looking forward. <laughs> five five six has been a blast so far. Super chill, very active. Yes, that's uh, that's a crazy activity in fifteen fifty six. But I guess this is pretty much in all the Imperium kingdoms that is uh, happening. This kind of activity. And uh, yeah, it's looking good. We won the last arc. <laughs> we fought against a pretty good team as well. It it was a blast, considering that it was the first time uh, we were fighting together and we're trying to to get together for the Osiris League. And I like how they are preparing the team for the Osiris League. We're gonna have practice matches as well, and. Um, we will also get in the chat like before the game, a long time before the game. 
because um, they want to make sure that everybody understands the plan and what they need to do and so on. So it, I, I really like it. I'm not going there for, I didn't went there just for the Cyrus League, but it's, um, it's also one of the reasons. So all the kingdoms that I have been chosen to, to apply to and um, try to go to, there, there was also another reason. Because I'm really good in Osiris League, or at least I consider myself to be really good in Osiris League, Ark of Osiris. And um, I didn't get any any feedback yet about my performance on the last game. But I think I've done uh, better than they expected. So I'm, I really want to win an Osiris League, or at least get very high in rank, like rank 4, rank 2 or something. You know, it's one of my dreams about the game because I know my capabilities about Ark of Osiris, Osiris League. Nice to see you are pumped about uh, 56. Thank you. Melin SD, thank you very much for becoming a member to the channel. Welcome to Legends Army. Uh, what will you do with your alt? I have an alt in 1682, which we are registered for KVK. We are going in Heroic Anthem. Not what they wanted. They really wanted Strife of the Eight, but it didn't pop uh, about Strife of the Eight. So there's not much I can do about it. They, they couldn't wait anymore because they already waited a lot. So we are going in Heroic Anthem in 1682. And the other alt from 2155, for now, I'm going to retire him. I'm just going to use him as a farm in 1556, Rally Filler. Um, I plan to probably do a Garrison. Maybe when they, um, when we defend the Fortress of the Pass, to have an extra Garrison, so I can just put the account there, so there is some sort of Garrison when we fill it with the farms and so, uh, so on. Strife for big guys. Well, that kingdom never had a Strife of the 1682. Um, and they really wanted to try it out. So I was like, okay. Issue for alt is VIP 17. Well, there's not an issue. VIP 17 is a really good VIP. 18 only gives you a little bit of extra troops. Matt Phantom. Yes, good luck, bro. 556 has a group of very good people. They definitely do. Thank you very much. And the plan is to just uh, expand <laughs> the group. 870 1013 Song 4 Drop. This is not Song, uh, by the way. This is Dark Titans. You can always go to the Alliance member. You can kick, you can click on one member if you're not sure. This is 1959. What Song is trying to do is destroy this fortress, but they need to burn this flag in order to to touch it or in order to build a flag uh, to touch the fortress. 1964 gone. Nope, 1964 is built and looks like they are building flags all around it so they try to take as much territory as possible. I'm not sure how all this is, uh, is working. They build a fort there, let's see if they plan to expand this, the situation with the fort. Twat. <laughs> You twat. <laughs> Pro, uh, Farm Alliance from 1307, I, I guess, because I already checked. AVGA 100% is 1307. They layer this area with forts. So I don't think 1960 will go anywhere anytime soon from that place. Uh, and yeah, 1960, if you're talking about... Uh, Mestekan, if you're talking about this fort, yes, it was triple rallied and obviously it went down. Yeah. 
But 1960, when it comes to field fighting, they are dominating. So they were pushed back when they built the fortress, because this guy all gathered up and uh, ganked on 1960. But on field fighting, they are dominating for sure. Adrian, my alt has better gear than most of MG Kingdom, but no VIP 70 to or garrisoning as rally leader or garrisoning, even if I have the right commanders. Hmm. Well, I started about my alt that is vip 17 i started this um, tactic about investing in the vip during the modern gems very early in the game so over the years all those vip points they piled up that's why even in my previous video about where you should spend those 50,000 gems during the during the modern gems that's why I showed where I'm spending my gems on that account and I showed how far I reach. I'm like 950k or 900k right now until VIP 18. But that was a long process. So every more than gems, I'm not getting materials, I'm not getting speed ups, I'm always going for the VIP. Because the more you put in the VIP, the less you need to reach the VIP you want. While you get some speed ups, you get some materials, those, thing, those things are gonna go. They are kind of like temporary uh, things. But what you invest in the VIP, it's always gonna stay there. People just have different opinions. You know, I try to give people advices about what they should do. Because I have VIP 18 accounts and I know how impactful VIP 18 it is. And then I have the other account, which was VIP 16. When my accounts were VIP 18 and then it went to 17 and I saw the difference from 16 to 17, that's 5% all damage. So the difference and that's why I'm also expressing the same things in the video. But if people understand or not, that's entirely up to them. They blocked TP spot for 62. Ronnie, are you ready for your first round against 1254? <laughs> Potato, if that's going to happen, I'm definitely ready. Don't worry. I got more resources than you think. Hey, Ronnie, I want to see the top kills in uh, 1556. Ranking individual kills. We have Goodfather. 35 billion kill points. Baba, 29. It has 25. Po 20, me, one chop, Miss Full Pool, Tour Guy, Tami Me. <laughs> Mestagon, Cheese versus the Legend. <laughs> well, I really hope we're not facing 1254. Not because I don't want to fight them, but I just think like uh, 3k VKs in a row, or is it the fourth? fighting the same kingdom is just feels a little bit dull but whichever kingdom we're gonna face we're gonna face i'm gonna fight red versus baba again <laughs> lol your resources are beast i'm gonna make a hundred million kills with these resources watch me <laughs> I'm just gonna Attila Nevsky all day. Hey Ronnie, can you show us alliance kills in 1556? 3 6s versus 5 5 6 maybe? Madness, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. I do oh, 3 6 5. I wouldn't want to face 3 6 5 either. I mean, they beat 1846, which is basically stronger than us in terms of alliance power and people. So, um, I don't know. And I also heard that 1365, they are still having their migration. I'm not sure how right that is, but I, I was told that their migration is still ongoing. Good father and Baba are crazy. Yeah. I think there is a lot of city hopping 
going on when 1960 is going in through the cities. SP Fortress, first fortress is almost burned. I think it's uh, enough and kind of not any more interesting to face the same. I think so, the same. But like I said, I mean, whoever we face, I'm, I'm just gonna fight. I would uh, 5556 five, five, again. Oh, <laughs> you must be in 1254. <laughs> 1365 won 5 versus 3. It was uh, 4 versus 3 versus 1, Lucas. I thought that uh, they were allied with the water camp in that KVK, but they weren't. They just didn't mind them because they were doing uh, their job burning 1846 so it was a, a different uh, approach it was four versus three versus one stop taking them for heroes <laughs> i'm i'm not taking 1365 for heroes i'm just trying to point out what i have seen on the field Right, because 1846 is also a well-known kingdom as being 24-7 on the field. That's how they won most of their KVKs, by their field presence and their coordination. When it comes to field presence and their coordination uh, of fighting in multiple places. But 1365 was just another level, was just a level above 1846 when it came to field fighting. So I'm not praising them based on ghost stories i mean it's just what i have seen i was part of that kvk so when it came to the field they they were dominant yes 1254 and i fought them in a previous kvk as well it's been like four kvks <laughs> and don't you guys in 1254 want to fight other kingdoms See how other kingdoms fight? <laughs> I don't mind if, if we have to match. I don't mind. 1302 is doing uh, much better than 1008. Yeah, 1302 is, is doing some work. Look, as it was 846 choice to go against 4 versus 3 versus 1. Yeah, that's also true. Akshay, how are you doing? Hello, Ronnie. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Welcome to the stream. I'm just here for the ride. It's so am I. I'm just here for the ride. I just want to log in and fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be worried about placing marks. Uh, what are people doing? Should we do that? Should I just want to log in and fight. Just go in and mm, take it. Drago lost all his crystal tech. I'm gonna put a tear in the jar of tears for that because Drago lost all his crystal tech. <laughs> he got refunded, so he got all the crystals back, and uh, in theory, he should have got all his speed outs back as well. Ronnie, send March for farm gold, please, right now. If I do that, I'm gonna have to, to leave the, the fighting. I'm not gonna go farm when I'm streaming. So let's see what is happening here in the north about this, uh, this DT fortress. One hour and 28 minutes. It seems like they might just build this fortress. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Yeah, it seems like um, Dak and Sog are abandoning this or maybe refreshing. Yeah, I think they're gonna they're gonna build this fortress. They drop so many flags. It's crazy. Nineteen sixty sixty AE Alliance Fortress. Hmm. 
I'm curious what they plan to do with this. If they're gonna do something. Let's see how is the other pass going, but I think there isn't anything happening at the other pass. Yes, yeah, 1307 has the pass is ghost town. It's a ghost town. <laughs> All people doing their uh, Karak. My lord. So the only action is over here. 1960 is sending their full force to the other level 6 pass. Once they own downtime equal <laughs> Ronnie R4, believe me. <laughs> Mastercon, curse you, curse you. <laughs> I'm just joking. And it's okay if I get R4, I'm, I'm fine with it. I think they are quite alright with our force and um, leadership in the kingdom. Lost crystal tech. Um, yes, apparently there was a bug with the Karak, and whoever done their Karak, um, they got refunded all the crystal tech. I will ask Poe to give you. <laughs> Hashtag Legend Ronnie for R4. BG Bush X249159. sound right, boy. 249159. 294, my apologies. 294159. Oh yes, so we were talking about 1008, yes they build a flag and looks like they are trying to do some push on this side. They also teleported two cities, two big boys. And I think if they would go more on the side they could probably fit in more cities, I think. But I. 2361 is all over the situation right now. They already teleported in and it seems that they are... Yep. They will push push them back. There is a lot of 2361 present over here. Not a whole lot of presence from 1008. Free, uh, F2P means free to pay. Yes, yes. You're talking about 1307? Yes, that's exactly what it means. Free to pay. Or forced to pay, depending how you want to put it. Can be that as well. For Imperium Kingdom, too low numbers. From 1008? Yes, I definitely agree on that. They are Imperium. 1302 is Imperium as well, and they have a big downtime. Who did Karak lost his tech? What the hell, who did Karak lost his tech? Yes, but they, they refunded. They had to reset the tech. I think people got too much uh, crystal from the Karak. No, actually they mean free to play. 7LM, come on bro, we know what they meant. We are just... Uh, we are just trolling. Imperium Kingdoms now as they so weak. There is many Imperium Kingdoms that yes, are not living up to the standards. I would say that it's 
probably a top of maybe 20 Imperium Kingdoms. 15 maybe Imperium Kingdoms. That are really as Imperium Kingdoms should be. And the others are just temporary Imperiums. Kingdoms that just jump to the Imperium. They are there for 1k vk and then they drop as well. Courtney. Who will win this KVK? It's hard to say. Right now, 1960 are dominating on the field and as activity and aggression. But Kingsland will be the final decision, which is going to happen Monday. When Kingsland is going to happen, that's when uh, we will know exactly who will win this KVK. And so far, the push in Kingsland is going to happen from uh, four passes each side. So each group of camps will have four passes. This is the 1307-1008 side with um, 1607, 1959 and so on. And this is uh, 1960 with 2361 with 1302 as well, and which they are going from uh, this side in. Monday is gonna be the most crazy fight. Probably one of the most expected fights in, in uh, this KVK. I'm really looking forward to be honest. I'm really looking forward to see the swarm on the flags, the massive murder balls. Thoughts on uh, 228 Ronnie. They are in uh, 556 and uh, 1254 last KVK. I don't remember watching them. 2 to 8. Is that 12 28 or, or 20 to 28? I think 12 28 is a very old kingdom and a well known kingdom. If it's 12 28. But I didn't really watch them closely to see how they were performing. Pass 6 is not much going on that's definitely true it's all about kingsland it is but you get actions oh my god 1960 is pushing so deep on 1307 territory just to fight <laughs> you know this is players that really enjoy the the game the field fighting this is what I enjoy about Rock as well, the field fighting. When I have to sit there next to a rally who's going on for an hour on a flag, on a pass or on a fortress and just put troops in, put troops out and just sit in a motorball. That's, that's not so much fun for me. But this, when you constantly do something, move troops, select new target, drag and drop all the time. This is fun. This is really fun. Check 1561 and 2133, uh, two Imperiums, same camp, and still can't invade zone 6. Wow, that's crazy. Don't want them to... Karak. <laughs> Army, how are you doing? Yes, past 6, nothing, but remember, 60 GT can swarm all single. <laughs> Well, we will see that in Kingsland, how well you guys can swarm. 60 will definitely win um, 07. I think that's, an, that's not a very good statement. SRE. 307 is very organized. And they don't have enough warriors, only numbers of players. 846 scenario is repeated. We were seeing Kingsland. Because um, even Matt Phantom, he said that he stopped fighting, which is one of the leaders, or the initiate leader who, who started that kingdom. He said he stopped fighting until Kingsland. So I'm guessing that right now 307 is probably just having fun or reacting to what 1960 is trying to do. Like when they build this fortress, they, they made sure they, take, they took it down. 
and uh, waiting for Kingsland, the the bigger fight. <laughs> Thank you very much for your donation, Army. Welcome to the stream. From what I know, 307 has a marker to not feel fire with 1960. Yes, um, I think that was from yesterday. I think on the yesterday live stream, it um, it was cleared about that. So whoever is fighting, you know, they just want to have some fun. Whoever is fighting right now in uh, 307 in this uh, CB Alliance. It's just that max tech players, it seems that is definitely making a difference. Having a lot of active max tech players is making a difference. Trio 7 will probably do better in Kingsland when 960 have to fight different spots and they scatter. Well, the thing is. When 960 is going to go in Kingsland, let's uh, have a scenario regarding that. So when 960 is going in Kingsland, as much as I have seen, they will be going through one pass, right? Which is going to be the closest pass from what I see to 1307. Of course, 1307, they have TW and CB who are pushing from the North Pass. But as passes here on the left, this is going to be the closest to 307. So that's going to be their main fighting force. Then you have uh, 61, which will build freely and uh, most likely take a big chunk of this territory. And they will just go in with the mother balls and uh, support 1960. So 1960 is not going to be alone in Kingsland. Of course, 307 will have 1008 and the other kingdoms as well which they will make murder balls and then you have 1302 right which will have the top side against uh, 1607 1959 and probably some of the 307 so they will be very busy with uh, with that side and uh, which is this alliance this is 60 mx so 60 mx will be somewhere in the middle and they will assist either on the north against uh, those four alliances or if they will be able to they will go on the left and support against 1307 or 1008 if it's needed but i think 1960 and 2361 will be quite enough for the left side and then 60 mx with song will be enough for the north side of course um, when uh, Monday, when the Kingsland is going to open, we will know more in details and we will see how the actual fight is going. But this is this is how it's going to be. So it's not 1960 that is going to fight alone in Kingsland, which means that 1960 will be able to focus on two points. That is 60 MX and um, 60 GT, which they are building with in Kingsland. So they can divide all the players in, in two alliances and fight in, uh, in two fronts. Because they will have 61 for support, they will have Song as well. So I, I think it will be pretty interesting to be honest. How the fight is gonna go. But that's how I see it. I mean each strong kingdom, they have uh, other kingdoms to support them as well. So they won't be alone. Same is for 307 and 1960. Which I think is gonna be a pretty equal fight to be honest. And uh, obviously, we will see Monday how all things is gonna play out. Roswald, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Where's the four drop, Ronnie? Um, there was one here where it says Showtime. If you wanna go back in the stream, I think it was in the first 15 minutes of the stream, it got triple rallied, which uh, obviously got demolished. And now this is the, the other four drop which is the 60 AE, 1960, and they already teleported uh, some cities. <laughs> That's nice. 
They already got a bunch of cities here, uh, burning flags already, and uh, most likely try to expand. Leopard, how are you doing, brother? Welcome to the stream. Super effective. That's it. <laughs> 1960 is on a roll, that's for sure. Thank you very much for your donation. Is top one and top two accounts in 1960 for same person? I'm not sure who you are talking about. 1077 is gonna be deciding factor. I'm not sure why do you think 1077 is gonna be deciding factor because these guys are locked in. So whatever they can do is just build flags and burn fortresses which take almost a day and by that time Kingsland is over. All good, hope you are doing well. Yep, we are doing well, we are definitely enjoying some quality fights here um, between 1960 and 1307, <laughs> enjoying some action. So top one is Governor, top two is Leopard. All right. So it's two different uh, persons. PW. Swarming guy Budica. Budica and Artemisia. My march. <laughs> Although I do Artemisia Budica. Real deal prime. Legend respects. Kraken. Kraken on the making. I only need 39 more million power. That's like 4 million TFIs. And nothing. What's 4 million TFIs? <laughs> so, like I was saying, uh, 1077 was deciding factor if they had managed to build that fort near the past six which got taken down yes what andrew said um that's that's pretty accurate so 1077 is not going to be any deciding factor when it comes to kingsland because all they will do is just burn forts everybody once kingsland is going to open trust me that any passes that has forts nobody's going to give a damn about them Everybody is going to be focusing in Kingsland for the next 10 12 hours. It's going to be all attention in Kingsland. If they need to distribute uh, players later on to try to um, defend some of the spots, make sure the fortresses don't burn down and all that, then they will definitely do it if specifically if they are winning in Kingsland so they don't get their backyard being cut off and burned down. But for, like I said, 10 12 hours, everybody's go is gonna have all eyes on Kingsland. Who win? We will know Monday. We will see you 200 million this KVK. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Do you want to see me as a Kraken? What is your prediction for the final result of this KVK? Madara Gaming, it's a very hard prediction because um, 1307 is also playing different cards, so you cannot know what they have up their sleeves. And like they said, as longer as they waiting, they they are closing the gap of the Crystal Tech. Because right now, 1960, they have a lot of, if not most of the players with max tech which is definitely giving them an advantage. So by Monday when the Kingsland is gonna open, of course players will farm more crystals, probably by bundles, do Karak and, and, and whatever other objectives they are doing, and they will keep working on their crystal tech, so they are slowly, slowly closing the gap. At least this was a statement from 1307. And if that's gonna be true, it means that Kingsland is gonna be very interesting. So that's not a bad thing what 1307 is doing right now, like um, 
backing down on field fighting and just um, just delay things until Kingsland. A46 also waited for Kingsland. They were very successful with this. <laughs> yes, fish, I know. The moment I knew 846 is gonna lose, I said that on the previous stream, is when I saw that they lost against the murder ball of 1365. And that was before the other kingdoms came to help 1365, because I know 1846 was kind of fighting alone. Four drop? <laughs> Another four drop? <laughs> So I saw that the, the first initial murder ball, I saw um, 1365 pushing 1846. That's when I know, knew that they're going to lose the King's Land. Because they lost that initial murder ball and then the other kingdoms came in to help 1365 with, with those big murder balls as well. While 1846 was already being uh, pushed down. If this 1960s win, <laughs> with two alliances, hold on, my brother is calling me. All right, give me one moment. I, I have to to get this phone call. It might be very important. So just one moment. Alright, sorry about that, I'm back. <clears throat> Leopard GT, free GT coins. Is that how your... Uh, how is it called? Yeah, um, I have a lapsus. Anyway, if I remember it, I'll say it. Ronnie, who do you think will win this KVK? We will know that in Kingsland, like I said. I, like I was uh, talking earlier. There is a lot of um, cards that are being played. So you never know what everyone is um, having up their sleeve. We'll wait for Kingsland and we will know more. Mini legend on the phone. <laughs> no, it was my brother. Actually, my brother is... Uh, it's older than me. I'm the young one. <laughs> when does Kingsland open? Uh, Jakob is going to be on uh, Monday. 1944. Oh, Let's see what is there. Nine, two, three, four, four. Oh yes, this is uh, the fortress that I was uh, talking about. TC yo, three hundred million power. Of course, he can afford to be in sixty GT. <laughs> Who's going to rally him? We got Luigi as well. They can farm this gem node, which doesn't take long. 
and they could uh, put another city there. <clears throat> it's gonna be interesting what's gonna be the plan here. Just make sure to keep burning these fortresses, maybe try to to push out. They could potentially try that. I mean, once they reach this um, TWAT fortress, it's just gonna be that, and then they will have a big opening. Let's say this is this is a good start with this fortress here. Also, we need to keep in mind that 1008 will be fresh in Kingsland. Almost fresh. Who's the king of 1960? I think they have multiple kings. They have a rotation on the leadership. But mostly from what I've seen is governor. It's just that right now he's busy with some work and I've seen Leopard to be king. <laughs> Nineteen sixty is also fresh. <laughs> All right, that's a good one. That's definitely a good one. <laughs> After all this fighting, nineteen sixty is also fresh. Okay. Well, I guess when when you have that many resources, <laughs> you're fresh. <clears throat> Bring the rally, please. What rally? Where to? So when it comes to field fighting, the, the two kingdoms that I have enjoyed a lot when it comes to field fighting is 1365 um, and 1960. And then the third kingdom was 1846. I mean, 1846 was higher in ranks, but they lost to 1365. So I can't keep them in ranks. So this is just like field fighting kingdoms perspective so far Ricardo how are you doing welcome <laughs> don't know everybody buys resources bro <laughs> if you didn't know if this is breaking news or flash news to you everybody buys resources And look at that, they are, they are just saying that they are just uh, using strategy and coordination. And I'll tell you another statement. If it cannot be proven, it did not happen. If you can't prove something, it didn't happen. That's the reality of it. <laughs> no bots here at all. Do you buy resources or have tons of farm accounts? I have tons of farm accounts. I do. I have a lot of farm accounts. Nineteen sixty is big brain and uh, play with full enthusiasm. Yeah, I like how they play on the field. Like I said. Uh, these are the number the number three kingdoms when it comes to field fighting. 1365, 1960, and uh, 1846. Because 1846 didn't give up on the field, even though they were being pushed back by 1365 all the time, but they never gave up in terms of field fighting. They were always there, always on the field, keep fighting, keep pounding, even though they, they were losing. So that's a good spirit from 1846 I like that they fought like 15 days or so then they always had presence on the field
and that's uh, something I'm expecting um, to see from us from 1556 as well. I'm expecting for us to to have that kind of presence, that 24/7 presence on the field. So hopefully that's that's gonna happen. We will see more on the next game, okay? Uh, we know 100 is pushing as well, but 2361 is uh, kind of covering that. Uh, where is 1254? They are not in this KVK. What do you think? How many Archer Marchers should be in a 7 Marchers? Maximum of 3. Maximum. Do you think 1960 need more players to be 1365-1846? It's hard to say. Because if we want to go by the number of alliances, 1307 has 5 alliances, which is pretty similar to 1254, uh, pretty similar to 1556, pretty similar to 1846. 1846, I think they have 6 or 7. But now after they do the cleaning, they're probably going to drop a little bit the numbers as well. So it's it's really um, hard to say. But if 1960 will have a migration, if they ever manage to drop Imperium and um, have a big migration, that would definitely be scary about 1960. Like someone mentioned, maybe 1034 migrating to, if there will ever be possible, to to move all the 1034 to 1960 or something like that, if they will ever happen. I think that that would be, that would be pretty wild, pretty crazy. I, I think 1960 will probably become the strongest kingdom ever. To have that much of um, max tech players every KVK is going to be crushing for sure. So yeah, 1008 is trying to push out as well, but 2361 seems to be all over the situation and taking care of it. Because in the end, it's all about the, um, the field fighting. So it's all about for how long 1008 will be able to maintain the field fighting. Because the moment they can't keep the field fighting, obviously they're going to get the flags burning and that's going to be it. We are not interested in uh, another alliance, rather keep a small amount of players with a higher possible quality in rock. More fun if it's not too many players. Right, so you see uh, Fish have a, has a different opinion, I'm not sure if he's in leadership, but it seems that he has a different opinion about it. They rather keep a smaller numbers, which in a way, if you want to put it like that, having smaller numbers, it's easier to control. And by control, I'm not. Don't don't get it in a, in a wrong way by control. Maybe it's not the the right word, but it's easier to manage. Probably that's the the better way to put it. Having a smaller number of players. Fish is 960 recruiter. <laughs> You love the watching 1v open field. I did heard that they were making some monster um, murder balls. That they were crushing it as well. Have a good stream. You're playing it. Thank you very much. Andrew. Everyone fights with uh, enthusiasm. When they know <laughs> they are strongest on the field. Players... Hmm. Zan, keep it, uh, keep it PG, bro. Easier to keep the dead weight down if you have smaller numbers. Well, that is also true, but I doubt that there is any dead weight in 1916. Anyway, whatever their strategy is, whatever their plan is for the future, right now is working for them. 
so they are they are being a top kingdom with uh, mainly two alliances right at a specific amount of players the game experience gets worse look at 1846 players not even able to farm level 6 nodes all the time rather keeping small and more quality more fun for everyone you see that's that's also a fair point of view because when you have a lot of players it is true it is something i'm experiencing right because we have a lot of players in 1556 right now so if i want to farm food which i know that is the most resource that i need i'm probably looking for five minutes and i'm definitely not farming level sixes i'm farming level, level fives <laughs> so you have main accounts who can't even farm the resources they need which which is another point of view but then everybody has farm accounts and and so on so you you get the resources if you really want to in the end But yeah, two strong alliances, that's definitely working when you have two strong alliances full of players who are all committed and dedicated and uh, really hyped about the game. It's definitely working really well for them. I enjoy massive uh, fights, I enjoy massive battles. throughout my time in rock i've tried to build kingdoms i've tried to build my own kingdoms in my own image uh it just didn't work i also didn't commit of um, too much about it which is true so this is what it is now i'm in imperium kingdoms and i'll definitely not go back to other smaller kingdoms i just enjoy big fights um, high quality fights Let's be honest, money is stronger than numbers of players. Hmm. I think we'll, I think that will um, we'll get the answer to that question in Kingsland. Because in Kingsland, 307 should have maybe 80% of the kingdom on the field. At least a couple of hospitals, I'm 100% uh, sure that each and every player will be able to commit so then we will know if numbers can beat quality if 1960 uh, uh, murder balls will not be broken then it is what it is i think having too big and powerful of a kingdom would make uh, kvk really boring Hypothetically, if 1034 were to migrate into 1960, they're guaranteed to win every KVK and won't face many challenges. Hmm, that's a fair point. I'm CCQ. Yeah, if the 1034 would um, ever migrate to 1960, they, they would become the most strongest kingdom in the game. That's very true. And yeah, they wouldn't face challenges. And if they wanted challenges, they would have had to go like one versus three. Like do a heroic anthem and just do one camp versus three camps and make sure in those three camps is also very high Imperium Kingdoms, very high names in Imperium Kingdoms. And just um, try to bash their way like that, because if they would do a two versus two, it would probably be a too easy KVK for them. So yeah, there is ups and downs. So what Fish is saying there, keeping a smaller numbers and high quality players, it's working better for them. I don't think anyone is ever bored of winning all the time, <laughs> assuming the fight is good. That the sausage. I could definitely get used to it just winning. You have a very good point there. I'll give you that. I'll give you credits. 
<laughs> I could get used with uh, <laughs> with just winning. Army, yes, that is your your boss, Leo. I change uh, to monk today. I had no idea I could be done. More challenge to play for sure. Ruben Omdel. I think you're talking about a different game. <laughs> Winning is always good. Definitely, I can I can tell you that. Like I said, I could get used to it. <laughs> Where is King Duck? I don't know where is King Duck. This fortress is almost going down. Let's see what is happening up top. Oh, there is a for ghost. Wa I would swarm the rally. Scipio and CJ. Oh, but he only has four marchers. I would have gone and swarmed the rally and not let them be the fort. <laughs> Ruben, <laughs> the addicted soul. <laughs> Definitely. I love Monk as well, bro. I love it. I love him. Let's see what is happening with this fortress. So I think they will build it. Yeah, it seems that uh, Song, they, they abandoned this. Yes, because this fortress will definitely be built. Let's see how this situation is going. Looks like uh, 60 GT is on a roll. Nineteen sixty got the ball and is on the roll. Burning force, burning flags. Losing can be fun also, lots of fights. It's true, but we all know deep down our souls that winning is winning. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Ramses primary, Henry secondary for off is good. What is off? Offensive? Open field? Yeah, that's good. If you put Ramses first, Henry second, yeah, that's a good open field march. This KVK is crazy non-stop fighting. I know, I mean... I'm I'm still still surprised at the activity on this KVK. I'm changing name from disturbed soul to immortal soul. <laughs> Ten GT players equal seventy marches. Twenty equal one hundred and forty. Thirty equal two hundred and ten. You know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Your math is not wrong there. That's also true what Fish is saying. 307 players ain't free to play. They all got tons of max tech uh, 7 marches players. But what I can say is something that I have experienced on the last KVK. 1960s going in, 1307 bouncing off. Because <laughs> in uh, the previous KVK, I fought against 1307, and um, what I can say is that they have a lot of archer marches, and I think that might be their downfall when it comes to field fighting. Because I was a Three March calf player when I was fighting them, and um, I was picking off their archer march, and I was getting really good trades. 
they won that KVK, but still. Pineapple pizza. Oh, I have only fans. <laughs> It's not just about seven marches, it's quality of those seven marches. That's also true. Okay, I had no plan <laughs> of spending this season of Congos. Will $500 be enough to at least decent tech? Free to play -ish. <laughs> Listen, with $500, Ruben, you will max the crystal tech. So you'll get the pop ups and you'll get two pass bundles, which might get you a little bit over $500. Or not. That's 370 plus the pop-ups and the crystal quest. Yeah, it might be around 520, 530-ish. But you will max the crystal tech. Maybe not when the important fight is. But let's say if it's heroic hunting, maybe by pass 8, you will um, you will manage to max the crystal tech. Or at least be done with most of it. Yes, sock got cheaper. If you want to max the crystal tech as fast as possible, I think it's somewhere around 800, 900 now. One hundred GT players equals seven hundred marches. One hundred and twenty <laughs> equal eight hundred and forty. <laughs> you want to keep going? One hundred and sixty equal one thousand one hundred and twenty. <laughs> Andrew, why didn't you wait to move to 1960? I've been waiting for quite a while. 900 is so cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap, 900. But considering that we used to spend, what, 1600 to max it? Um, 1600. And the first one was 4400. Can you imagine that I maxed a crystal tech that cost at 4,400 or 4,200? I, I, I can't remember exact. The first crystal tech. And I was like, I'm not doing this again. And I was like, F this. If this is going to go away, I'm not doing this again. And then they lowered it. They made it like 1,600. Yeah, when I was in 14, 15. And uh, then they lowered it. And now they lower it even more. See how intelligent uh, Lilith is? They made you spend a lot before, so that 900 starts looking cheap. What I'm usually doing to max the crystal tech now, with with the current system, is all the pop-ups, the crystal quest, the, the whatever, and two pass bundles. I'm doing what you said the other day, just spend on sock. Well, that's the reality. I mean, all the max commanders that you have, how can you see their performance if you're not maxing the tech and, and competing properly in the season of Conquest? What's the point? You have 40 max legendaries, but you have a bad crystal tech and you, you don't see the performance of your commanders in SOC, you know? Where is the, the four drop? I just joined. So there was one four drop here from 1960, which uh, got burned out because they were doing triple rallies. And um, this is a, a successful four drop from 1960, which they have a lot of players around. They are burning flags, fortresses, having some activities and probably want to push uh, as, as much as they can to push further. We'll see. We'll see what the, the big, big plans are. This is the second fort uh, drop. Or theoretically, this is the first one. The other one was the second of the pass. And now there's just the field fighting with 1307, which I don't think they, they want to come out. <laughs> Why 
when is 556k vk i hope um, during the winter Four fifteen versus A four six was epic indeed. Yeah, that was really good times. Domovu, my head is exploding from that much uh, mad. I hope during the winter too. <laughs> you see, Shab is also not ready. <laughs> Ronnie, 500 million pound next KVK. If if you have one of those unlimited cards, just send me the details. I'll make it sure I'm gonna be 500 million power. I'll empty the shop every day. As free to play, I'm doing 5515 Nebu with Max YSG. That's really good. 5515XY with Max Nevsky. I think free to play should focus on mini investment instead of going on just one march yeah that's very too that's solid two marches that you have right there after the hard work to unlock t5 and max commanders lily hits you with kvk tech <laughs> that's true at least you have more gold than me i have more gold than you Really? Really, really, really? You should farm more. I do have to say that 50 million of each, they are from uh, Baba's son. 50 million of each. That was probably a welcome gift, I guess. He gave me 50 million food, 50 million wood, 50 million stone, and 50 million gold. The rest of the resources I've, I farmed. Borrow Baba card. Listen, I don't have to borrow any card. I could, well, I can't say that on the stream. But yeah, he could also borrow me his card. That could also work. Ronnie will be 200 million next KVK. Not confirmed. <laughs> My farm is working, sort of. <laughs> well, Shab, put him to work. Put him to more work. More work than usual. So they are pretty much on a stale point right here at the pass. Not much going on at uh, the fortress either. Ronnie already find the sugar mommy. I'm looking for it. And after thinking you are done with special talents and iconic equipment, they will bring something else. Be sure of it. Oh, they will always have to bring something else. I'm so lazy to log into my farm. Yeah, tell me about it. I'm just forcing myself to do that. And then the other action is happening is here. Looks like 1008 is uh, pushing on the field. They are coming out. They abandoned this flag, which they cannot hold it. And they are heavily fighting on this flag. Oh, they have a 22 billion kill point player, the king. That's definitely something. That's a heavy field fighter there. Ten billion, nine point five. They definitely have some heavy field fighters. This one zero zero eight kingdom. That's for sure. How do you farm on your main? Do you focus farming on one type of resource or mixed? Well, right now, to be honest, 
I can't find the resources that I need and I'm trying to help the Alliance as much as possible because we are still building flags. The tech is developed, but we don't have the, the max flags. As you see, 461 territory. So I'm focusing on the resources that we need for the, the storehouse. But in general, I'm just going for food, mostly food. I try to balance the resources that I farm based on the cards that I have. So if my cards are lower on food, I always go for more food cards. If my cards are lower on stone or gold, then I go for more gold. So I always try to balance with the cards that I have. Watching players from 0-7 uh, streaming, you see few marks say don't AFK. How does the VC-56 doesn't have full territory with 500 flags? Well, this is how I can explain you the best. If I go by Alliance Power, you see the DL-56, which is a fresh new alliance that, that came in. You see Alliance give level 37, 500 territory. So pretty much they were given um, already built alliance, full alliance and the players from uh, VC56, they took another alliance, which we are building it right now. So that's that's how, how they done it. Because I suppose since um, a Dark Nation came with a full alliance, they probably had a couple of requirements as well. You know, because I think that was the DN1, the main alliance from uh, 1860. <laughs> Shab, you're one of them. <laughs> but again, we will have to wait until all the troops come back, until people will uh, start getting back the, the power, and um, then we will see the, the true power of the kingdom. Hello Legend, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Shab, <laughs> that's how I know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Show Alliance kill point ranking in 556. Ranking Alliance kills. I think it's shifting a little bit. Because we had in... Uh, we had over 500 billion in VC so I think they shifting players a little bit KM is 300 TN is 300 460 465 490 it's a lot of kill points looks like 1008 is holding strong on this flag Do you know Ronnie 556? Uh, 556 follow free for all MG depend on training. I think this is a well known strategy in many other kingdoms. Because when you have so many wells that want to compete for MG, it's very hard to. Fix the MG, if you know what I mean. How what are your resources? Panjera, if you want to give me some, they will look much better. <laughs> Free for all MG means impossible to have with uh, five number wells in the kingdom. Yeah, when you have a lot of wells in the kingdom, it's hard to have a fixed MG. How are you going to compete with them for new leadership commander in MG? Why do I want to compete for the new leadership commander in MG? Tell me. Why do I want to do that? Explain yourself. You should, you should know that I don't work on leadership commanders. The only leadership commander that I worked on 
was Trajan because he is very good for support. The moment he was released in 2021, 414, I just instantly maxed him. He is one of the best support commanders in the game. But other than that, I um, maxed... Uh, where, where is she? I maxed Theo. But let me just show you how I maxed Theo. You see? 677. Seven. This is just from Mightiest Governors. <laughs> And then I spent 13 Universal Sculptures because that was missing. I was not going to wait just to max kill her. This is just Mightiest Governors. <laughs> I, I should thank these to 1415 because based on my contribution in the KVK, they were, they were always giving me leadership MGs for some reason. I'm not sure if it was intention. I'm not going to say that it was on purpose. But they were giving me a lot of leadership MG and I was keep getting Theodora. And then the previous MG leadership, I took the last 180 and I just max kill her. It's good to help you fight for one minute, maybe less. Who does that? Who will uh, be the ones with the most kill points in this game? Well, right now I think it's good father. I'm not sure. Let's see next KVK. If he's gonna keep it up like this, he's gonna be he's gonna keep being the number one. Only 13 gold heads, you are funny. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Does it show on, on Guan? No, it doesn't show. Attila. Nope, it doesn't show on Attila. Ramses? Oh my god! Let's see Artemisia. Look at that. 324 Artemisia from Mightiest Governors. And probably Car King, I'm 100% sure. And 366 Universals. Let's see William. Oh, there you go. 561 universals, 129 regular heads. Let's see. Chandra Gupta. 255 Mightiest Governors. What's that? 180 plus 90, that's 270. Okay, so the math blows my mind here. I think it's a rank 1 in the Mightiest Governor and um, a rank 3 and... Uh, yeah, probably like, like 4 MGs. And then um, 435 Universals. Let's see Nebu. <laughs> How is it only 4? <laughs> Wait, Nebu is from the Mightiest Governor. How do I know? Yeah, Nepo is from the Mightiest Governor. Yeah, look at that. So I used full universals on Nepo. How many MGs you won? That's not fair. Why? Did you know that life is not fair? Look at that. 34, 656. From the keys. In KVK, yeah, very possible. Gilgamesh, 72, 618. This can also tell you that I don't really spin for the wheels, right? I don't, I don't spend a lot on the wheels. 58, 632. 690, look at that. Takeda? Nope. Who else? Scipio? 57, 633. I don't... I don't play the wheels. 
Yeah, and many of the other commanders it, it doesn't show because they are too old. Old generation commanders. Oh wow, there is a big fight going on here, which just means that. Let's just zoom in and out to clarify the situation. But it looks like 1008 is uh, is pushing on the field happily. They're definitely putting some pressure on this side. Not sure for how long they will be able to keep it up. Maybe it adds uh, legendary keys in KVK chest. Yeah, probably from the tavern. Ronnie, which one is better with uh, Nevsky, XY or William? If I had to choose one, I would go for William. If you had to choose one, Nevsky, William. We are talking about AK gold sculptures you used overall. A lot more than that, trust me. A lot more than that. And how many gold sculptures I have right now? 1125. I'm getting ready for the next calves. That's when, uh, when you're a. Uh, let's say, uh, max player, and when you're pretty much picking the commanders that you really want. You always have uh, goal heads. You want me to have a million gems? I can only dream of having 8k goal heads. Well, my account is, uh, is pretty old. Consecutive logging days, 1314. And I was VIP 14 almost from the first day. I can 100% tell you that. Or maybe the second or the third, who knows. So if you want to put this times 3, that's 4,000 gold heads that I got just from the chest. 4,000. Khan is my biggest uh, uni regret. I don't regret investing in Khan. Because I remember the good times that I had with him. And um, how good of a commander he was until he became useless, of course. So 5551 William or Max William? 5551 is good enough. It's really good. If you feel like you're really enjoying William, you should max him. It all depends how many gold heads you're acquiring a month, how many other commanders you have max skill, do you have to invest in other commanders. But if not, 5551 William is really solid. People feeling uh, about Khan that they've done a bad investment is because now he's almost useless, which it kinda is. But back in the days, he was a beast. So that's why I don't regret investing in him, because I had really good times with, uh, with Genghis Khan. I only see BG. No, there, there is a 2361. The RX. But yeah, BG has probably a bigger size murder ball on this side. Khan was an archer butcher. They melted. Yeah, he was destroying archers. 4k gold heads in a span of three years so what i'm trying to point out sre is that i got 4k gold heads just from collecting the daily chest from the vip and then you have to think about all the events all the 20 sculptures events all the uh, the special events the 35 gold heads events um i usually buy the bundle when is the event where you have to purchase the the gold heads that you get the special coins from the bundle, which allows you to get the gold heads. So if you pile up all those gold heads, the more than gem events, which I never miss a single one on this account, then not just the more than gems, you have the recharge rewards, all the recharge rewards. 
So if you really want to pile up all those sculptures, I, I think you'll get to a pretty big amount of sculptures on the course of a three year period. Or it's more than three years, maybe three and a half. Should I max CPU at 5551 or get Budicat 5511 for more marchers? Ramsdaff, you could potentially get Budica as a 5511, but Budica needs to be 5551 so you can get the skill damage reduction from the third skill as well. If you don't want to get that extra march, you could max CPO, but if you want an extra march, if you really feel that you need extra marches on the field, then uh, yes, you can do the Budica. You can have a start on that Budica. Khan is not that bad though, many cav focus players still use him. Those skills firing constantly due to low rage requirement plus chance for double skill is good damage. It's good damage but me personally I don't use him, I don't get good results. XY is overrated, always goes down first. <laughs> yeah but the thing is when he is not focused, XY is doing some work. Genghis Khan could be improved if his expertise would allow second commander to fire off active skill too. I think that would be OP. Because you could potentially do like a Genghis and Nevsky or a Nevsky and Genghis. And getting Nevsky proc again? I mean, seriously. Who's winning? Uh, right now it's undecisive. We'll know in Kingsland. But 1960 is uh, doing better as... Uh, an aggressive kingdom they are being more aggressive recent Lilith error forced crystal tech reset check that yeah that's uh, a lot of people know about that I still use Khan sometimes with XY and Nevsky okay uh, that's that's shocking I use Khan with Attila in Olympia with good results there you go People are still using Khan. What tree you think is better, support or skill? As a primary commander in open field, skill. Support is good for some of the commanders, like having maybe two commanders with support tree. That's really good and helpful. But skill is better. Either skill if, if not skill attack tree. Those are the two trees that are really good for open field. Right, so let's just do a quick recap. 1008 is skirmishing at this pass. I don't think they will get any any further than that. 1960 want to fight at this pass, but they, they're not having with who to fight. So it's probably a little bit boring for them. And then it is this fortress from uh, 60 AE which is built over here and we got our boy Leopard who's going in for some action <laughs> so that's how the situation it is right now we will see tomorrow if this will expand let's see one two all right so Guan and CPO Bodica and Artemisia, probably for the, the skill generation. We got Trajan and I can't see the second in command. That looks like Honda, Trajan and Honda. And then he has Nebu and YSG. XY and Mehmed, I like that one. Gilgamesh and Tomiris. And then he has Nevsky and I guess that's William. So that's his marchers. A really solid seven marches except the Trajan and uh, what was that uh, Honda yeah I'm not happy about the, the Trajan Honda combo but I guess he wants more AOE so yeah really really solid seven marches I, I like those seven marches <clears throat> that he done instead of <coughs> Gilgamesh and Tomiris I would have probably done 
Nebu. Not Nebu, I'm sorry. Uh, Ramses and Tomiris. I'm I'm a big fan of Ramses. So I would have done Ramses and Tomiris, but that probably has doesn't have enough Mars speed. And um, instead of Nebu, why is G what he done? I would have done Gilgamesh Nebu. But YSG is, is still solid for um, for the AOE and they are also dominating. So it, it's very different the way the, they make the marches because they are always always dominating the field. So it helps them a lot to bring commanders like, like YSG. But me being always a target, I, it's hard to bring YSG. My, if I ever bring a march with YSG, it always goes down first. It's like I'm doing with XY Mehmed or XY and uh, and William. They always target my XY Mehmed, XY and William. So yeah, I always have to to um, build my marches around being uh, very tanky. Honda is not a bad debuff. No, it's not, and it, it has good AOE as well. 60 like Gilgamesh Tomir is a lot. Could be something there. The problem is Gilgamesh has the skill tree, so the rotation is pretty high. I don't think you get a lot of debuffs from Tomiris. But I think um, they don't necessarily care about the poisons as debuffs, which they would probably care about the defense debuffs as well, and then Tomiris brings a lot of attack to the archers. And Tomiris uh, reduces the attack of calves and reduces the counter-attack damage they take. Let, let me just look. So that's that's a nice combination, I guess, because Gilgamesh has some defensive capabilities as well. So if you combine that with, with Tomiris. Troops led by this commander gain 10% increased attack and 10% increased counter-attack damage. Okay, it's not reduced. And when attack, reduce the attack of cavalry units. Yeah, so that's not a, a big deal. But is this the defense reduction, which is a passive skills and passive skills stack, and then you get another 30% attack. So this is basically 40% attack that you give to Gilgamesh, and then you have the poisons. But Gilgamesh has the skill tree, so I don't think they get more than 7-8 poisons per turn. But I guess they probably tested out, and probably sometimes Ramses is on the same situation and um, don't do a lot of, of skills as well. I'm more in favor of putting Ramses with uh, Tomiris than Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh has really nice skills as well. Take 15% less normal attack damage. Yeah, they they probably done their test. I mean, they are they are players with um, high kill points. So I'm pretty sure they know what they're doing. Also, 70 most of their troops are infantry, so using archers sounds good for 60. Uh, 307, I think it's using a lot of archers. If you're referring by um, 07 not 17 because I don't think there is any 17 in this kingdom when you have so many Tomiris I guess you will always be over 10 stacks the only thing is I don't know when Tomiris does damage that's all yes when first Tomiris does damage it takes all the stacks that's how it works Andrew so if you have multiple Tomiris warming a target the first Tomiris will take all the stacks Is Amani still a good investment to pair with Artemisia? To be honest, now that they release Boudica, no. If unless you want Amani Tor for Garrison, then yes, but not for the field. As if you have Amani Tor, you can definitely use for the field, but I would rather build Boudica if you have the option to choose between Amani Tor and Boudica. Hey Ronnie, I am an Archer player. What do you think about my four marches for open field? You have uh, Gilgamesh, Nebu, Ramses, YSG, Amantor, Artemisia, Bodhika, Mehmed. 
I think those are pretty solid archers. I like Gilgamesh Nebu, it's solid. The Ramses Wise Jin, really good. A monitor Artemisia. Yeah, that's um, four solid marchers. What I would change for the future is probably Mehmed. That's the only one I would look to change into the future. Mehmed is okay to put with archers if you really need something, but preferably I would put a, an archer commander. So if you build Henry, for example, in the future, I think a Boudica and Henry or a Ramses and Henry and you do Boudica YSG, I think that will be a much better option. Pakal Haral is still good for Rally. That's what they've been using a lot, 1959, this KVK. Because it's the only rally that is not swarm, swarmable. So, hey Ron, you should check your messages in Rise of Kingdoms. I try not to check my private messages when I stream. I don't know what people can send me. <laughs> it's just a safe way. It's a safe way to do it. <laughs> Right, so um, I think I'm going to end the stream right here. It's been a very nice and, uh, and fun stream. Two hours and 41 minutes, probably longer than um, I was expecting. So the situation right now is looking really good for 1960. There has been some uh, really enjoyable fights, but right now they people don't really want to fight them. <laughs> It's just 1008 fighting with 2361. Is Leo 5511 good? Ragnar, I wouldn't invest in Leo at this point in the game, as the way Leo it is. Archer commanders are a lot of fun and so many options. I got confused trying to think about what marches I will make in my first season of Conquest. Yeah, they are fun, but when. Uh, Someone with three calf marches picks on you is not fun. Baltazar, thank you very much. Thank you all for tuning in for the stream. I appreciate you all for being here. I hope you all have a nice day ahead. And I'll see you on the next stream. This is your boy, and Ronnie, signing off. Peace out to you and take care. See you on the next one. And stay safe out there, my friends. Leopard, thank you very much for your donation. And um, thank you very much for becoming members of the channel. I appreciate you all for your, all your support. Bye. See you on the next one. I'll get a video going later on, so you're not going to miss me for very long. <laughs>